Good day. My name's Warren Davison, Senior Fund Analyst for the Offshore Solutions, and I'll be taking you through the month of November. What I'd like to start off with is just a bit of a market background, just to paint a clearer picture of how the funds have performed. For markets, November was dominated by rising COVID hospitalizations in parts of Europe and concerns about the new Omicron variant. Having started the month well, developed market equities ended the month down 2.2%, whilst government bonds rallied. Among the major Western economies, the sharp rise in COVID hospitalizations has so far been limited to parts of Northern Europe. Austria, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, Switzerland and Ireland have all seen ICU admissions rising sharply. In contrast, hospitalizations in the UK, US, France, Italy and Spain have not been rising at an alarming rate. The extent of restrictions imposed so far has varied with the number of hospitalizations. For example, in Belgium and Germany, work from home restrictions have been implemented while Austria is now under full lockdown. Meanwhile, in the UK, where booster jabs so far seem to be doing a good job at limiting hospitalizations, masks are required on public transport and in shops, but not in bars and restaurants, and people have not been encouraged to work from home. November also marked the start of the UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, where leaders from around 200 countries convened and hoped that they would take decisive action to limit global warming to less than 1.5 degrees Celsius versus pre-industrial levels. Turning to some fixed income, the emergence of the Omicron COVID-19 variant punctured risk sentiment in November. Government yields fell and the dollar rallied, while stocks and high yield credit sold off. Yields were buffeted through the month, as inflation indices in the US, Europe and UK remained elevated. The US Consumer Price Index rose 6.2% year-on-year in October, the highest level since 1990. The US Federal Reserve rhetoric turned increasingly hawkish over the course of the month. Chair Powell and other members of the policy committee suggested tapering could be accelerated and they may stop referring to the inflation as transitory. Nevertheless, the US 10-year Treasury yield fell from 1.56% to 1.46% over the month, with an intra-month high of 1.69%. The yield curve flattened further as the two-year yield rose from 0.5 to 0.57 over the month. Looking at the month-on-month growth in assets under management for the offshore solutions, we saw a pullback in line with global risk assets. November saw weak equity and high-yield credit markets, which hurt the solutions. Advisor flows remained positive over the month with roughly $20 million of net inflows occurring predominantly within the Global Flexible and Global Creator. Looking at some of the shorter term highlights, defensive funds held up better than their risk on counterparts. For the pound funds, the pound dropped to its lowest level in more than a year against the dollar as the prospect of fresh coronavirus restrictions clouded the outlook for the UK economy. This would favour the sterling class, as the USD funds would do better. We can see this from the above table, as 5 of the 5 and 6 out of 6 funds within the Global Preserver Pound and Global Flexible Pound class outperformed respectively. For the month, 91 was the best performer in the global preserver, moderate and flexible, as its defensive nature shone through over the tough month. PIMCO, Fidelity, MFS, Bailey Gifford and Ned Group were the bottom performers across their respective funds. Looking at the PSG Wealth Risk Radar, for the month, 
we have four funds that appeared on the quantitative risk radar for the month. Fidelity appeared this month for the first time. MFS Meridian Prudent Capital remains. Bailey Gifford appeared on the radar this month as equity markets have sold off. And Ned Group Global Equity remains. For the qualitative radar, we have UBS Strategy Funds Sustainable Growth. The fund had a mandate change recently where they will be incorporating ESG factors into their investment philosophy and therefore this triggers a flag for us to monitor the fund. Turning to the individual fund performance, the Global Preserver had a tough month underperforming the peers by 47 basis points in the dollar class, however outperformed the pound class by 79 basis points. The three-year holding period remains under pressure relative to peers, whilst the longer term numbers still remain favourable. Looking at the relative performance over the month, 91 Global Multi-Asset Income was the top performer as its defensive nature and equity hedges helped over the month. This however was not enough to keep the funder fund above the sector as we saw Fidelity, BlackRock, Schroders and Pimco all producing negative excess return. The Global Moderate had a negative month in line with global markets and unfortunately underperformed the peer group by 15 basis points. The five-year holding period remains strong relative to peers producing 83 basis points of alpha per annum. Looking at the relative performance, 91 Global Strategic Managed was the top performer. The rest of the managers detracted over the month with T. Rowe Price and MFS detracting the most. On a positive note, all managers have produced positive excess return for periods of one year and longer. The Global Flexible had a negative month, however outperformed the peer group by 9 basis points in the dollar class and 197 basis points in the pound class. The seven-year holding period remains strong relative to peers, producing 578 basis points per annum of alpha in that dollar class. Looking at the relative performance, 91 Global Macro Allocation had the only positive excess return for the month. They have hedged a large portion of their equity exposure and are only exposed with 33% of their portfolio. This benefited them over the month. Bailey Gifford, however, has fallen the most over the shorter period as their growth style has moved out of favour. Longer term, however, all the managers are still producing positive excess return. Lastly, turning to the Global Creator, the Global Creator did have a negative month in line with global markets, however, outperformed the sector average significantly by 86 basis points. The seven-year holding period remained strong relative to the peers, producing 346 basis points of alpha per annum. Turning to the relative performance, after producing a negative 2.2% excess return last month and being the bottom performer, Fundsmith has now produced a positive 1.7% excess return and again is the top performer for the month. This just shows how quickly markets can switch. Nedgroup Global Equity and Vulcan Value Equity were the only two funds producing negative excess return over the month. Turning out to that longer term period, again what we can see here is positive absolute returns and excess returns from our underlying managers. Looking at the overall peer rankings, the peer group rankings remain strong over the short, medium and longer term. The Global Preserver has experienced some turbulent periods as uncertainty remains within the fixed income market. Three of the six funds produced first quartile performance over their recommended holding period. One fund produced second quartile, one fund produced third, and one fund produced fourth. 
So equally distributed. However, we are proud to say that four of the six funds are average and above over their period. To summarize all of this commentary into three measurable pillars of consistent above average performance at below average risk whilst maintaining a competitive price, what this slide shows is that PSG multi-management are in fact outperforming their three pillar approach which we take very seriously. Thank you for listening to me today. Should you have any questions, please do feel free to reach out and we are always here to assist you. Thank you.